All right, let's return to our breaking news story coming out of North Korea. Pyongyang says it's carried out a successful test of a hydrogen bomb. Let's talk to Robert Kelly. He's a professor of political science at Pusan National University, and he joins us now via Skype from the South Korean capital, Seoul. Um, Robert Kelly, uh, last year, the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said or claimed his country was indeed making a hydrogen bomb, but many experts doubt they have the technology to do this. Yes, they did. I mean, it's a pretty significant step up. Hydrogen bombs are an entire order of magnitude larger than atomic bombs, the basic weapon that North Korea had before. We assume no one really knows, of course, but we assume that was similar to what the Americans had used in World War II. A hydrogen bomb, that's a pretty substantial step forward. I mean, this is something that the Soviets and the Americans didn't develop until the 1950s. They've never been used against civilians. We don't actually know. I mean, we have you know, theoretical predictions, of course, but we don't actually know what this would actually do in a city. That's why people are so terrified. This is a really major step up. I also have to say that, I mean, you know, we have no other evidence other than what the North Koreans have said. You know, they said this a couple months ago, I think like a month ago that they had this, and there was a lot of skepticism. Until we actually see some real proof anything can be verified, I'm still kind of skeptical. What do you make, though, of the timing of this test? I mean, why is Pyongyang doing this now? North Korea sort of goes through a cycle of provocations. They usually pull something at least like once a year. Um, these things are usually intended to shake down the Americans, the South Koreans, or the Japanese for aid or assistance or attention or something like that. Um, the North Koreans were sort of rebuffed in discussions between the South and the North in December. This may be a way of signaling that they want something from those discussions. They didn't get it. Um, in the coming election, there's also a coming election in South Korea in April, and this may be a way of signaling that, you know, you need to pay attention to us and you should sort of participate in inter-Korean talks in the future. Usually, inter-Korean talks go on hold during the political season in South Korea. This may be a way of signaling dissatisfaction with that. Uh, let's just talk about China for a second. I mean, uh, no advance warning, we understand, was given uh, to Beijing about the test. What's this telling us uh, about China's influence over its erratic neighbor? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. I mean, there's a great deal of speculation about just how much influence China actually has over Pyongyang. I tend to be of the school that says that they do. Um, but we also know that North Korea doesn't want to be a colony or a clone of China, right? I mean, you know, if you sort of think about East Germany, East Germany really was a Soviet satellite and was really dominated by Moscow throughout the Cold War. And North Korea has really tried hard to avoid sort of sliding too far into the orbit of any one of its sponsors. Now, given that China is really the only sponsor it has left, the relationship between the two of them is testy. And this may be a way of signaling to China that you may dominate us economically, we may need your assistance diplomatically, things like that, but we're still not going to take orders from you. We're still not, you know, sort of a satellite in your orbit, and we can still strike out on our own. That's the way I would read this, as sort of a political poke in the eye. Uh, just a final thought from you, Professor Kelly. Um, how is this then likely to play out in terms of strained relations between North and South Korea? Well, it certainly won't help. Right? I mean, every time the North Koreans do things, they think they believe that they can intimidate South Korea. But South Korea is pretty far beyond that level now. The North Koreans have been pulling provocations on South Korea for as long as anybody can remember. And actually, the South Korean public doesn't really respond to these things terribly well. The South Korean public usually sort of shrugs its shoulders and, and they move on. Um, it may influence the elections coming up a little bit, but North Korea often seems to think that these things will help push the South Korean electorate to the left, because the left in South Korea is a little bit more sort of pro-engagement toward North Korea. And actually, that's not usually what happens. Actually, whenever the North Koreans pull these sorts of stunts, it usually pushes the voters to the right. That would be my projection for this, too, that this will actually mobilize conservatives much more than it will uh, liberals or people on the left in South Korea. Robert Kelly, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you for having me.